hurts me. Does it? Oh, yes, absolutely. But have you only heard it now? Yeah, but it, it's enough. It's going through my brain. So what, what has it done for you, it please? It makes me think I'm on perform. Oh. And I will. OK, did you catch on uh, Peter Hitchener's news tonight where Essendon chairman Paul Little and his wife have donated $10 million to the University of Melbourne's history department? It's fabulous. Which is very benevolent of them yeah, to very, do that. very much so. Ten million dollars. They've never had a bequest like that before. No. And uh, it, it tempts me to ask the question, if you had ten million dollars to burn, what would you do with it? Would you give it to charity? Would you buy yourself an ocean-going yacht? Would you build a mansion? If ten million dollars fell into your lap, pennies from heaven, how would you spend it? Nine six nine hundred six nine three. How would you spend it? Well, I'd, I'd, well, okay. I'd, I'd certainly give half of it to charity straight off. What would you? Which one? Well, I'd, I'd probably spread it out around many charities. Oh, would you? Several. So they all got a hundred thou each, or oh. a couple of hundred thou each. So yes, half of that would go to charity, no doubt about that. The other half, I'd hopefully spend on friends and family. Perhaps, what, like a birthday? No, <laughs> charter a cruise ship, perhaps, and, and take you all around the world. Oh, where would you go? Around the world. And who would you take? Well, I haven't made a list yet, but oh. we'd be away 104 days, and I'd be playing host. So there you are. Listen, right? listen, the second day you'd be in a foul mood, you wouldn't be <laughs> anywhere on deck, you wouldn't be anywhere to be found. Well, I'd be up having a smoke somewhere near the jacuzzi oh. reading a book. <laughs> yes, you could right. all look after yourselves. And, and people, hello, Phil. And don't worry me now. <laughs> I'll see you at the end of the voyage. Bye, folks. Enjoy yourselves. And what would you do with $10 million? Oh, I don't know. I'm not, Have I'm a think not, about uh, it. But I'm not going to give it away. Oh, you won't give any of it away? Oh, well, I suppose I would, but you don't, I, I hadn't thought of it. You'd, I think you'd give each of your eight grandchildren one million oh, I suppose and keep you, two yeah. for yourself. I think you would, wouldn't you? Well, well on, the, you. on the proviso, uh, that they're going to be careful with it and, and, be, and, and be scrupulous and, and, and uh, use it wisely. I'd put it into a trust fund till they're 18, perhaps. Yes, you know? yes. So yes, there right. we are. Bit of fun, folks. What will you do at $10 okay. million? Freely Wangaratta is joining us tonight on 2QN. The Milliquin up there in New South Wales. Good evening to you. Lovely to have you with us. And a quick look at the ratings. Yes, please. Uh, not necessarily in order, but these are the top ten All right. uh, that scored very well last night in Melbourne. Yeah. Uh, the Block, Nines News, 60 Minutes, Sevens News. Sunday night did well. ABC News. Mm -hmm. Beach Cops, Adele live in London for the Nine Network. Oh, they love her, yes. They do, they love her. What's her secret? Uh, Graham Norton interviewed her about her new album. Yes. Uh, but my friend Jill's been a fan of hers for years. Oh, really? Do you know her work? No, I don't. No, she's huge, Well, really. not until, you know, recently. Yeah, she's as big as Lady Gaga, I believe. Yes. Well, Adele live in London in the mm -hmm. top ten. Captain, uh, I was going to say Mark Phillips. Captain Phillips, which oh. is the story of the... Um, uh, the fellow's getting on board that uh, the the, uh, the trawler. Yeah, that was a Tom Hanks movie. That's right. Mm. That's right. Yes, that will do well. And then TBL Families uh, Sunday night, and that's and that's the top ten. Okay, now what about um, there was a repeat of the verdict at ten thirty? That didn't score. Oh, was there? Uh, yeah, a repeat from Thursday night. Oh, I didn't know that. No. And then what about Doctor Who on Channel Ten? Does no, that not a count? Mention, not a, oh yes, Doctor Who just out of the uh, the top ten. Okay, now something I wanted to watch last night was on SBS. Uh, do you have a mention there of a program called Genius? It was a documentary about innovators. No. And the inventors of planes, and you would have liked this, the newspaper. That was the last Oh, night. I'd love that. Yeah, I've, I've got it on disc for you. I'd love oh, that. I'm going to lend you that. Oh, well, that's very kind. Yeah. So we'll see Genius coming out in the next two hours. Well, I'll leave it to you for the weekend, but you can keep it a week. Oh, that's very generous of you. Thanks. <laughs> All right, let's go to Bronnie, who's joining us on Nightline tonight. Hi, Bronnie. Welcome. Hi guys, um, if I had the $10 million, I'd build another ice rink because we desperately need one for all our ice hockey players and our ice sports. I, uh, oh, yeah. Are they few and far between? Yeah, we've only got the old one down at Oakley and you've got the new one that used to be called Ice House and now it's called the O'Brien Group Arena. Mm. Oh, I see, right. Is that the one at Docklands, is it? Yes, that's right. And what about the one at Ringwood? Is that gone? Oh, that's gone oh. many moons ago. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> really? I think you had a go to ice skating, didn't you, Bruce? 
Uh, I don't think you had well, Shane yeah, well, yeah, when I was about five. <laughs> All right, Bronnie, that's how you'd spend the money. Thank you. All right, another ice rink, Bronnie. Yes. Yep. I'll make a note of all these uh, dreams. Right. There might not be many of them. <laughs> oh, there um, will be. <laughs> Cameron, hello, Cameron. Oh, hello, Boss, and hello, Philip. Yes, Cameron, hi. Hello, Philip. I wouldn't burn the money. If I had $10 million to burn, I would definitely wouldn't burn it. Well, I'm using that as, as I a know, I term know. of faith. I'm just, uh, just splitting hairs there. Um, no, I definitely... Uh, I pursue my dreams. It would be a country estate, and it would be one of those big circular driveways. Oh. I love. I'm a. I'm a sucker for those big circular. You know what I'm talking about, Paul. My word, I do. I love them with that crunching uh, stone underneath. Those the... big circular drivers and a really long drive. Yeah, a, a really long, like big um, giant gates outside a country estate. On um, on two or three hectares will be big enough. Beautiful. Yeah, a bit like Gone with the Wind. Beautiful. It's about six acres. A really long driveway. I'm talking like um, 600 metres long, you know, to the house. And then the house is totally in, on its own. There's no zero lot lines. It's not connected to the garage next door. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah, you've, got, you've got all that land around you, you know. That, that's, my, that's my dream. I get rid of my townhouse and... <laughs> my neighbours and everything. <laughs> my neighbours will be like, uh, like uh, you know, uh, 200 metres e either side of me, so that's yes. a safe distance to keep them, keep them away and keep keep the dogs at bay and all that sort of thing. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's that's my dream, boys. All right. Oh well, that's uh, that's all a goal. Good on you, Cameron. Dream, boys. Thank, Thank you. Hope it comes true for you. Be nice, now, a, a bit of a survey in the paper tonight. Uh, in the uh, in in the paper, uh, what do you find most stressful about being a parent? Yes. And there were there were varying uh, comments. You know, pr uh -huh. uh, providing for the children, they don't understand what I'm asking them to do. Mm. Sibling rivalry is uh, is a big issue. Yes. So, what do you find stressful about being a parent? Mm -hmm. I just suppose even paying the bills can be stressful, can't it? Well, yeah, I suppose that's part of providing, isn't it? Yeah, being a parent, absolutely. Education and, and all. Or I might take some calls about that. What stresses you out in relation to your children? I mean, they're obvious, aren't they? Providing they don't understand sibling rivalry. That, mm. That's, that's going to come into it anyway, isn't it? Happens in every family, I'm sure. Of course it does. Mm. Of course it does. Yeah. And in any business, in, in trying to... In trying to look after staff, for example, it's a bit like uh, child uh, rearing, isn't it? Yes, look, I think we're stressed every day, even on the road, aren't we? Getting to work, you know? There's stress all around us. Yeah, but not, not like being a parent. Emails and phone calls and whatever. Everything sort of crowds in around you, doesn't it? It can, you not know? Not really, no. you can You can crack up very easily, oh, can't you, Bruce? Can you? Mm. Oh. Well, you could. Some You'd people. Be stronger than that. Yeah, but some people are, you know, very sensitive, I imagine. So what stresses you out? Nine six nine hundred six nine three. Why not give us a call? Nine six nine hundred six nine three. It's a cottage girls open on the weekend to rave reviews. Yes, it was wonderful. Uh, in the paper today, they they're loving it. Uh, it might be in the age. I haven't caught that review yet, but uh, it's well deserved. I assure you. It's only on for two weeks, folks. Don't miss it. It's the best show I've seen this year by far. Oh really? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Mm. And, and, you know, Jeannie has short seasons, so don't uh, procrastinate. <laughs> short dresses. Uh, Linda and Altona. Linda, good evening. Uh, hello. You're talking about what stresses you out. Yes. Yes. Uh, hair rollers. When I put my hair rollers in and then I put a hairspray on them hmm. and remove the roller, the curl curls around the wrong way. Oh, yes. It's so annoying. It stresses me right out, and I have to do it again. And then when I do it again, the curl just goes sideways. Mm. Maybe you need a Marini cold wave. Maybe I need a wig. Uh, that might be the answer, Linda. I think so. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, then. Thanks Thank for you. sharing your stress. Hey, thank you very much indeed, Linda. Queenie, good evening. Uh, good evening, Bruce and Phil. I was, uh, I've got a couple of things to say. First of all, I saw your lovely granddaughter and Simon Owen's little Felicity oh, on yes. Facebook. And 
wasn't that great oh. that they played each other? Oh, it was wonderful. Oh, was, no. look, I was so thrilled yes. to see them it was, a, it, was, it was over the weekend. Let me fill you in. It was over the weekend, but they got together, and Simon met up with uh, my son, who's a, a coach of, of basketball. Oh. And, they, and the girls played uh, each other, or uh, at least had a, a game with each other. Well, they only got lost. They only lost to Felicity's side by six yes. goals, yes. but they, it was so unusual for them too, and they're the same height. Yes. That they, oh, look, I thought it was lovely, Darling. and she has got the Mansfield look. Beautiful things. Yes. yes. Lovely girl, Emily. Yes, she's and glorious. So, so is Felicity. She is but too. Anyway, I was going to ring you last night, but it was such a good program last night, I didn't want to put that in. Yeah. But I was fossicking around in oh, my disaster, and it looks like a, a dis disaster area I've got in the single room. And I found a poem from my little grandson when he was in the fourth grade, and he wrote a poem about me. And it's in his little childish writing. Hmm. He's 28 now. Oh, is he? Bill. Is he? And uh, he said, "I, my nan, I love my nan. She absolutely spoils me rotten. Yes, yes. <laughs> and she has always got lollies in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> this is from a little boy. <laughs> and uh, she always gives you a hug, gives me a hug, and... Her house is always lovely and warm. Oh, beautiful so kid. Maybe, uh, maybe I always. Uh, oh, I can't read some of them. It's a bit funny in yeah. the writing. And she takes me to the park to give me a swing, mm. and uh, and uh, she says she loves me and hugs me, and she always brings me things. All everything I want, <laughs> and I love her, and I know she loves me. That beautiful. That's that's about it. Never, never, but never. I thought I'd read it back well, to don't, him. Well, uh, don't, don't, <laughs> don't. The other night, don't, he, wasn't, don't. Uh, he wasn't home, so I didn't do it. But I thought that was lovely when I, I oh, read it because beautiful. it was a little boy's thought. Oh, they're saying they're... that his name, he loved his name. Yeah, and he still loves and, him too. Uh, you know, <laughs> um, you, you, I just found well, it. He was in about the third, fourth grade. Yes. Room, uh, Bruce. And it's in a lovely, uh, well, well, it could be going. Uh, I'll give it to him. And I'd, I'd, it frame, and I'd frame it. Frame. If I, oh, yeah, frame it, I would, yeah. Yeah, well, anyway, I, I loved the program last night. I did love... Uh, uh, Kevin Trask's. Uh, oh, yes. You know, I think he does a great job. A wonderful job. Of the Sunday night. Yes, he does. Uh, with the 1942. Yes. Well, there was a lot of uh, memories there. Well, we thought with, of you. We uh, thought you know, of you. Mm, coming home. And we thought of you when he mentioned the on sort of thing. It brought yeah. it all back to mm, me. But mm, some oh. of the people were ringing in and they were wrong about what they were saying yeah, well, about some right. of the. I never was forget saying, your they were a lot younger and they yeah. wouldn't even know we'll never forget your what that was all about. Yeah. And with this um, war that we've got, we can't see, I mean, there's a lot, I, I just don't like all the, the news on it. They could give a little bit out, but not all this fear, because it does frighten people. Yes, it does. It doesn't frighten me because I just go around my business and just say, well, if it happens, it happens, and just get on with your life. Mm. But, um, you know, people, have, it, it's like a propaganda, you know, and they would be happy to see a four-page uh, mm. wraparound in the sun the other day of all that, what they had done. Yeah. I would... Yes, I agree with that, and I think uh, disconcerting in the Herald in the uh, uh, Herald Sun today yes. about do you think it'll come to Australia? Forty-two percent. Oh, yes, it will. I yeah. think that's very negative, isn't it? I mean, it might be truthful, it might be fact, but 
it could get people unnerved. It's only hypothetical, for goodness sake. Absolutely. Yeah, well, I know it is, but yes. it's very unnerving. I agree. I don't think we need those uh, stats no. at all. And now, thank you very much, Queenie. Uh, the Melton skirmish over the weekend, which... Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to say amounted to nothing, but, but it didn't. There was a lot of conflict up there, wasn't there? Oh, yes. Yes, there was. Yes, there's too much uh, violence in society. I saw a documentary on the ABC tonight on, on Bendigo, how that city has come to terms with the building of a mosque in that area. Yes. And there's a couple of uh, very strong women who will be uh, who are leading the city of Bendigo in, right. their, uh, in their quashing of... Uh, of any racial tension up there in the building of the mosque, and why not? Uh, Peace-loving people, let's go ahead and do it. Yes, well, Milton's a very big town, so there's room for a mosque there, too. So, whether you are an inhabitant of Milton, how did it, mm. uh, how did it pan out over the mm. weekend? Were you a bit afraid? Mm. Were, were you were happy with the result? What, uh, what was the end result for Milton? Perhaps a mosque on the outskirts of town might be a compromise. Well, you know? why should there be any compromise? That's, uh, that's the argument, isn't it? Yes, surely. Mm hmm Hmm? There's a mate of ours, Chris of Broadmeadows, Bruce. G'day, guys. How are you? Hi, Chris. Uh, look, I'm, well, to, to be honest, Leon, I've, I've had a lot of consequential thinking today. Not meaning I've done anything wrong. I've done nothing wrong, actually. I'm just starting to think, of, look, you know, if I really crack at any stage, you know, the number of really detrimental things that have happened to me at times and money being scammed off me in this incident over a week and a half ago, now losing a woman to a taxi driver and sort of thinking, well, if it's as easy as that, you know, I'm not thinking suicidal or nothing like that, but you sort of think, well, maybe I'm best being alone because I, I put the priorities first. I thought, well, at least nothing comes back to bite me with incidents recently. I've still got my lovely two-bedroom unit. I've got my disability support pension. I've got my lovely family, mother, my mother and my brothers and sisters and all that, and a few close friends and contacts out there. And uh, it's better just... Uh, you know, they keep telling you just walk away. Even if someone talks down to you or, or say something really filthy to you about your mental illness and that. I mean, yeah, the easy, I know the easy way out, uh, you know, is to start swinging punches, but I just I just don't want to do that, and I don't want to destroy another Christmas. You know, too many times I, um, I've had to ring up the Broadway's police or, or some police station and say, look, can you just take me away, put me in holding cells for a while? But there is a funny end to that because one of the police officers I spoke to last night said, look, I'm starting to have enough of all this, you know, look, you know, because I haven't reacted with uh, aggression or violence or anything like that, people seem to think I'm a soft target. And I said, look, can I come, come and sit and hold, hold themselves for four or five days? He said, Chris, we told you last time, people try to break out of jail, not break into jail. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yes. Thanks, fellas. Exactly. Yeah, don't lose your sense of humour, Chris. Good Chris, thank you very much. It's half past ten. Uh, what would you do with a cool ten million? Give it away? Would you invest it? Give it to uh, to family members? How would you use that to the benefit of loved ones? Yeah, and how do you cope with stress in the family, particularly among the younger generation? And what memories do you have of your nan? A wonderful call from Queenie earlier on about a little note that she found. Mm -hmm. A little piece of poetry written by her grandson, what was it, 25, 30 years yes, ago? Yes, it would have been. And this dear little boy and all the innocents uh, listed how Gran was so important. Yes. What, what about your Nan? What was that loving memory that you have yeah. of Nana? Did your grandparents live long enough for you to know them? No. Yeah. Did you love them, Bruce? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's not... Well, I looked at a city here and say no. Oh, well. I just wondered, you know, if you were close, were they all living in Melbourne? Mm. Oh, well, you were lucky mm. sometimes. Mm. Uh, families are scattered, aren't they? Hmm. Nine six nine hundred six nine three. You might win a prize. Yes, anything you'd like to talk about, any issue uh, that you'd like to raise. Uh, Jerry's Girls. What was the most uh, perhaps absorbing musical comedy that you've seen? The, oh. Now they're bringing back, and I heard an ad for it today on Three AW for Singing in the Rain. No, are I they? Thought, oh no! It was only last year that they brought that back with uh, Todd McKenney. Yes. And I know it's a, proverbi a proverbial favourite, and people love it. But mm. do you think we? Perhaps overdone? Well, apparently they're going to do it with real water well, this time. they did it with real States. water last time. And, and they're reviving the sound of music They did as it well. with uh, real water the last Perhaps time. Perhaps they did, but uh, this is going to be rather spectacular. And the sound of music is coming back. Would you like to see that again, Bruce? 969069. Well, don't gauge it through me. 969063. And Julie Andrews is in Sydney uh, producing uh, My Fair Lady mm. at the moment, as we speak. All revivals, aren't they?
which are very popular. You can't go wrong with a revival. Everyone knows the song. <laughs> Obviously not. Mm. Up, uh, Susan, where's Susan listening to us? Hello, Susan. Where are you? Clifton Hill, Victoria. Right. Clifton Hill. Yes, good evening. Hi. Hey, speak to us, please. Okay. If I had $2 million, I'd put it in the weather and I'd barbecue a chop. Why? Because money is the root of all evil, and since I, the more money I have, the more unhappy I am. I'm much happier having very little money, and I've got a sister who's loaded with money into that. She hates her life and wants to kill herself. Yeah, but surely, wouldn't you want to spread it around, Susan? That's spread sad some joy? about your sister. It just makes everybody unhappy. Yeah, that's sad. Well, well I think you're being very selfish. Wouldn't you want to spread it around, spread a bit of joy? It doesn't bring you joy. Well, it might to different charities in need. I suppose you could do something with it in Africa. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. You could do. You could post it over there, but I guess. Okay, but you wouldn't want to inherit that. I understand why. Okay. Yeah. I've told you before, I knew a couple on the Gold Coast they were in radio up there, and they won Bruce one of those art union homes, one of those uh, flashy homes mm. on the marina there at Southport, and within six months they were divorced, so it just didn't work out for them having that Well, luck. that happens so often, doesn't it? Yes, it can, yes. You know, that uh, they don't agree and mm. we're going to sell the property. No, we're not going to sell the property. Let's move to something else. And they just uh, don't see eye to eye. And how often do you read in a British newspaper or a Sunday newspaper where people have inherited all this money and uh, that's just led to misery and within a year they're bankrupt again for some reason? Mm. They just don't... They, they need a financial advisor, obviously, don't they, to get started mm. rather than squander it themselves. Well, that's right. Uh, 23 minutes to 11, out and about, as he is normally with us on Nightline, Jim, Jim Shambury, and uh, we're having a look at a, a movie. Jim, good evening. Who's your cell? How are you guys? Yes, Jim, good to talk to you. So good, so good to hear you uh, talking about money, one of my favourite topics. Of course. <laughs> one of my favourite quotes uh, about money was from Johnny Carson. What's that? Yeah, he said, you know, money can't buy you happiness, but you can lease until whenever you like. <laughs> ah, <laughs> good one, yes. Very yeah. funny, very good. Actually, you guys know Evil Can Evil? Yes. He actually had another great uh, line about money. Because he, he, he liked spending a lot of money, and when he was challenged about why he's so extravagant, he goes, well, money can't buy you out of hell, and it can't buy you into heaven. So uh -huh. enjoy it now. Very true, Sam. Yeah, yeah, good one, Jim. What's doing in the movies, Jimmy? Guys, I've just seen Creed. Creed. Yeah, Are you, you familiar with the Rocky movies? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, the uh, Sylvester Stallone movies, yes. Right, well, just when you thought they couldn't squeeze another ounce of blood out of that particular franchise, along comes a movie about the son of Apollo Creed, who Rocky fought in the first uh, two films, then trained with him in the third one, and then he unfortunately gets clobbered to death by that big Russian in Rocky IV. Well, this is a film, a spin-off movie, starring Stallone, but not written or directed by him, about the son of Apollo Creed basically taking up the, the fight of his father and following in his footsteps and recruiting Rocky to actually train him. And guys, I've got to say, as much as we like to joke about sequels and how weak they are and how shallow they are, so this is still proved with Rocky Balboa that if you think about it enough and take it seriously enough and take your audience seriously enough, you can do it well. And I've got to tell you guys, this is a pretty good movie. And uh, what role does Sylvester play in the movie? He plays himself. He plays Rocky. He's still Rocky, but he's a very old Rocky. Age has really caught up with him. In the first film, you guys will remember the famous scene where he runs up those stairs and, yes. and then pumps his fist in the air. Yes. Well, he has a lot of trouble getting up those stairs now. Yeah. His uh, age has really caught up with him. Nevertheless... He needs to get the fight into this young guy because he really wants to prove himself that he is his own man. He really needs to prove to the world that I'm not just my father's son, I am my own person. 
And, of course, it links up quite beautifully to the third Rocky film in which Rocky discovered the whole training culture of Apollo Creed. So rather than it coming across as a cynical movie, it really does tie in to foreshadowing that we saw in Rocky III. So guys are getting a huge surprise with this movie, which starts on Thursday. And, and who plays the younger boxer? The younger boxer, okay, is played by a really good young actor called Michael B. Jordan. He was in a movie called Fruitvale Station a couple of years ago, which was directed by a guy called Ryan Coogler, who also has directed this film. So basically they've stayed together as a team to put this movie together. This film was also produced by the original Rocky producers as well. So it has, like the movies about pedigree and about legacy, the film itself has a very deep uh, legacy with the Rocky film. So it is, in effect, Rocky Seven. Yeah. Although you might, might not want to call it that. But right. it's a very, very good film. Guys, can I very quickly talk to you very quickly about another movie? Yeah, very quickly, yep. Very quickly. It's called The Crow's Egg. It's a beautiful film. Oh, from... yes, I heard you talking about this with uh, uh, Grubby and Dee Dee. Yeah, um, mate, it is an absolutely... It's a gem of a film. It is so beautiful. About two poor... Indian kids living in the slum, their favourite playground, which is a vacant lot, gets developed into a franchise pizza place. They become obsessed uh, via the flyer, you know, the little, the little, uh, the little piece of paper, yes. that, you know, promoting home delivery. They become obsessed with tasting pizza and saving up money and earning money to buy a pizza. Yeah. And the film turns into this beautiful film about class yeah. and poverty and social media. Sounds fabulous. Uh, three, what is the three eggs? What's it called, Jim? Yeah, it's, called, it's called The Crow's Egg. Oh, The Crow's Egg, yeah. yeah. I've read some very good reviews yeah. about that. A couple of interesting films there, Jimmy. I would have thought that maybe Rocky had that its day, but yeah. obviously not. Uh, no, thanks. Uh, you're very enthusiastic about it, Jim. Mm, a couple of good films there, Jimmy. Thank you for the preview. Look. Uh, amazing, though, the, the pickling and the plums yeah. and, uh, you know, you'd get Fowler's Vicola. That was part of the growing up as a kid. Yes. The Fowler's Vicola bottling out. That's right. Yes. You make your own jam. Well, of course. Mm. Yeah. Does uh, still still uh, have her own no. bottling? Thank you, Kate, for, your, uh, for all the information from the Herald Sun in the morning. Joe at Hobbers Crossing, good evening. Hi, how are you guys? Good day. Welcome, Joe. Thank you. Um... Ten million dollars. Wow. You can't live without it. I'd love to. Oh, if I won ten million dollars, I'd just pay some bills and then I'd help a lot of people. Yes. And some dogs, um, what do you call it, shelters and things oh, like that. Of course. I, it would be such a pleasure to be able to give yes. to people. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about is nanas. Right. Now, I had, a, I had two nanas and... One, I, she was like the queen mother, real polite and sweet, made the scones, taught me about the flowers in the garden. Yes. And then I had my other nana that I lived with in Richmond. I was talking about that last night. And she was like Ma Kettle, rough as guts. Was she? <laughs> yes, yeah, so funny. But I loved and adored both of them. And I have fond men. When I lived in Richmond with Nana Orham, she, I, we'd look out in my bedroom window and look right across this... Um, the Yarra, and you could see the... Do you remember the um, Allen's Light? The Allen's Lights, yes, I do. I'd sit and watch that every night from yes. my bedroom window. And I, I, I bet there was a glimpse of the Skipping Girl Vinegar. Yes. I still remember that. That was beautiful. I love all those neon signs. Yeah, they're lovely. Yeah, but they're my two grandmothers. They were both beautiful. Yeah, of course they are. Yeah. But, but and and their difference was the charm, wasn't it? One was uh, like one was like Ma, the Queen Ma, Mother, Ma Kettle, the other the mm, Queen Mother. Mm. <laughs> yeah, extreme differences. Yeah, uh, good one, Joe. Thanks uh, for sharing. Yeah, that. lovely, uh, lovely example. Thank you. Bye. Of Nana, the yeah. two different Nanas. Thanks, yeah. Joe. Kelly at Reservoir. Good evening. Evening, guys. How yeah. you doing? Hey, Kelly. How's your week been? Good. Oh, so far, thank you. <laughs> um, I. I'll be honest, but the $10 million question, my nana always said to me, money can't buy you happiness. It can buy you the things that are nice, but yes. it doesn't buy ultimate happiness. No, no. And I'll be honest, 
I agree with Nanny there because I'll be honest, my boyfriend and I, we don't have a lot, but all the money in the world I would not trade him for. Mm. And it's like the simple things. When I cuddle him of a night, when I wake up of a morning and he tells me he loves me, yeah. there's no price you can put on that. Well, they're the important things. Yeah, and, like, money just can't buy those sort of things. No, they cannot. Like, yeah, they may buy you big houses, holidays, this and that. Yes. But the simple things in life, you just can't put a price on. No, you're right. Although, if you've got a bit put aside, nice to have a big splurge occasionally, isn't it? Well, my boyfriend and I, we, we can't afford that. We don't even... We can't even afford to eat out. Oh. But the thing is... You've got each other. Yes. That's important. And it's very important. And I love him, and he loves me. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm. Lovely, uh... Lovely uh, companionship. Like the song says, the best things in life are okay, free. yeah. Uh, thank you very much. This is Nightline with you. It's uh, 5 to 11. Yeah, and after 11, you might like to phone in. Good chance of winning a prize, and we'll discuss some of the topics that have come up already. Apparently, as we discovered from the Herald Sun, a record number of cars are being stolen. Yeah, have you ever had your car stolen from right under your nose? They're, yeah. uh, they're very bold these days. It'll be a sinking feeling. Oh, it? be awful. And uh, as uh, the reporter from the Herald Sun said that it was only a bomb, but uh, yeah. I loved it. Yeah, well, as, as Kate would have indicated, you've got all your personal possessions in there. It's like your office being stolen with what's in the glove box and the boot and perhaps on the back seat, you know. Uh, were you lucky enough Hello to again. get it back? This right. is John Doremus with the passing parade of the story of the world's first war correspondent. His name was William Russell. His on-the-spot war dispatches helped bring down a government, led to the reorganisation of the British Army, and influenced Florence Nightingale in founding Hospital Nursing. And I'll be back after this message. Get the great rates of budget, budget rent to car. With big cars, cars in between to drive your dollar far. Hey Bob, why such a big range of cars? You must have eight or nine different models. That's right, John, and we change them over every year. Yeah, but why so many types? Well, let me answer you this way. Would the car you hire to drive yourself around be the car you'd hire for your visiting managing director? No, it wouldn't be, but... Or would the car you'd hire for you and your wife be the same as the one you'd hire for your whole family? Hmm. Well, I see what you're getting at. People have many different kinds of rental needs, so we have to keep a big enough stock to give them what they want when they want it. Why hire a Holden Premier when all you need is a Holden Gemini? Makes good sense to me. The right car at the right price is just another way we drive your dollar further at budget. We drive your dollar further at budget rent car. William Howard Russell was born in County Dublin on March 28, 1821. After leaving school, he studied law in Dublin and London and was duly called to the bar. To pay for his studies in Dublin, he worked for a local newspaper. His cousin, who worked on the London Times, asked him to cover the stormy Irish elections of 1841. So brilliant was Russell's coverage that he was invited to join the editorial staff of the Times. He quickly made a name for himself in London journalism and with the outbreak of the Crimean War in 1855, became the world's first war correspondent. The idea of having a reporter at the front horrified army blimps, and they made every effort to frustrate him. But Russell was not easily pushed aside, and wherever the action was thickest, he was there, scribbling out scathing reports of inefficiency on the part of the army authorities, and downright negligence on the part of the government. The reports created a storm in England that ended in the government's collapse. At the same time, they inspired the immortal Florence Nightingale to assemble a contingent of well-bred young ladies with whom she sped to Russia and thus gave birth to nursing. When the war ended, William Russell and Florence Nightingale returned to England as national heroes. New military leaders swept the British Army clean and abolished useless traditions. A year later, Russell was in India, reporting the great mutiny of 90,000 Sepoy soldiers against British rule. And while thus engaged, his leg was broken by a kicking stallion, and he was left lame for the remainder of his life. 
He subsequently went to America to report on the growing hostility between the North and the South. In Washington, Abraham Lincoln readily granted an interview to Russell of the Times and advised him to visit the South and see the slave country at first hand. For two months, Russell toured the southern states, appalled by what he saw. Many Englishmen had hitherto tolerated slavery because it supplied cheap cotton to Manchester. But when the Times began to print Russell's chilling reports, they were forced to admit that Lincoln's cause had some justice. Russell returned north just as war was declared. At Bull Run, outside Washington, he watched the routing of Lincoln's army in its first battle. His description of it caused a furor of indignation in the North, and the Union Army withdrew his accreditation on the grounds that he was a Southern supporter. He returned to England to face further blasts of criticism and fell into public disrepute. But he was soon active again, reporting the Franco-Prussian War and subsequently the Zulu Wars in Africa. In 1895, William Russell was knighted by Queen Victoria. Only old age prevented him covering the Boer War, which broke out a few years later. He was then 79. He lived on for another seven years, years of galling inaction for the world's first war correspondent. Our time is up till we meet again for another chapter in the passing parade. This is John Doremus, and goodbye for now. Wayne Garata, good evening to you, and to QN the Milliquin. Welcome to uh, the final hour of Nightline, the final hour yeah. of uh, Monday night on 3 AW. And fans of Bruce and Phil watching us or hearing us around the world on the Internet. Jess at Brooklyn. Hello, Jess. Me. <laughs> G'day, Bruce. And Phil, Hello, Bruce, a couple, I want to um, state a couple of points. I think money does matter. And if you've got money, like it's hard on the pension yes. to do everything you want. Yes. Like little things like go and have coffee with friends. Mm. Sometimes you can't afford to get uh, do this. That's true. Um, pay your bills. Sometimes you get late payments yeah. overdue. Yes. Um, Having a little holiday, I've never had a holiday, no. which would be wonderful. And you, you must feel much better when you can do all these things. And to buy birthday presents for your friends, yeah. which I haven't been able to. Yeah. You know, little things like that. So money does mean a lot. We're very lucky to get the pension, the age pension. Yes. Um, but... It's not enough to sort of um, to go around to do everything. No, you can't. You've got to do. No, yeah. you can't splurge, can you? You can't say, oh, I've got that uh, extra money, I can go and uh, spend that. Yeah, but even just have a cup of coffee with your friends. I know, I know. Yeah, or have a holiday. It'd be lovely to have a holiday. Yeah. Of course it would, Jess. Oh, mm. may maybe a win tat slot, though, Jess. Oh, oh be lovely. Yeah, good luck to you. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right, Jess, why don't we organise a pancake parlour voucher for you and your girlfriends to go along and have morning or afternoon tea on us. Oh, lovely, lovely. Would that be lovely? A lovely. A $50 pancake parlour uh, voucher from High Point, Doncaster and Malvern East, and they're open 24 hours a day. Lovely. Uh, well done, Jess. Good All night. Right. Bye. You say, don't hang up, Jess, whatever you do. Uh, Mark at Thomastown. How you going, Mark? How you going, Bush? How you going, Philly? How you going, Bush? Yeah, what's your story, Mark? Well, Mara, I just have one thing to say to you. You know, I want you to figure out why I said that to you. Yeah, baby. Is that why I said that? Yeah, baby. Yeah, why? Why, Mark? Why, yeah, baby? The 18th anniversary of Boston Power movie this week, and I think it's a great celebration. Yes. It was, it was one of my favorite movies coming up as a kid. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, and uh, me and my, my wife, now we actually, it was the first movie we watched together. Is that Boston right? Movie. Yes, yeah. yes. And I remember... We will go to the last movie at the movies, and um, it was a great movie as well, the third one. Yeah. And I think it's just a great uh, trilogy. I think it's a great movie, and uh, I'm surprised it's not been celebrated a bit more. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, yeah, so I just think I was just wondering if you guys knew that that, that was the 18-year uh, anniversary. Yeah, I, I didn't know that, no. No, I wasn't aware of that. Mm. Yeah, what about you, Bridget? Do you like the movie? I, I, no, I didn't see Austin Powers, I must admit, Mark, but uh, a lot, it was divided, wasn't it? There was other people that absolutely loved him or loathed yeah, him. Yeah, you're not a Mike... Well, well, wasn't there? Yeah, you're not a Mike Myers, a Mike, uh, Myers fan, no, I'm, I'm not saying that. He divided an audience, didn't he? Yeah, but Backrack was in all three movies, which was cute. All right, Mark. 
Mark talks a bit like Richie Bernard, doesn't he? Thank you, Mark, very much, yes. Uh, yeah, the movies that you and, uh, and your partner went along and just loved mm -hmm. and, and, and you, you shared, as, as Mark said, uh, yeah. the Mike Myers movies. Yeah. Both he and his wife went along and just absolutely loved it. Well, what could be interesting where two of you went to a movie and one of you loved it and the other loathed and it. And couldn't see anything funny or mm. suspenseful or entertaining with the, uh, with the movie. Yeah. Yeah, I guess comedy is a very personal thing. Well, it's not so much comedy, anything at all, mm -hmm. isn't it? 969 nine Ray at Mulgrave. Hi, Bruce and Phil. G'day, Ray. In 1970, a very close friend of mine got married, you see. And in those days, as you well know, money was very tight. We didn't have cars, nothing. Anyhow, my friend says, what are we going to do? I said, look, don't worry, I'll see if I can, a friend of mine can lend me his car, So, which he did. Went to church. After the church, you know, the bride and groom used to go to a studio for a photo taken. You That's know? right, they did. Yeah. Coming out of the studio, the car was gone. How's that? Oh, no. Can you believe the, <laughs> the embarrassment? Oh, <laughs> well, dear me. <laughs> It was just so bad. I never forget that day. I can even see it today. Anyhow, we had to end up. Go well, they didn't have any reception because there was no money. Of course, you know they had to go to a family gathering. So anyhow, they had to get a taxi. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was so embarrassing. So, like I'm saying, you know, it, uh, these things do happen, and it's something you never forget about it. You know. No, you do not. You no. so right. about how cruel yeah. on the wedding day. Yeah. Oh, on the wedding day, and it was a hot day. Mm. Oh, it was so embarrassing. Mm. And I was the driver too, you know, so mm. never mind. So that's what happened, you know. And did the car ever turn up again? Well, it did turn up again, but uh, you know, I didn't want to hear about it because it was a friend of mine, but he says, don't worry about it. I've got it back. So mm. it was okay, you know. Oh, yeah, it would have ruined the day. Yeah. Oh, big time, big time. Yes. Yeah, I was so happy to drive them around, you know, but... Of course. Never mind. And you, so, you'd, you'd feel, Ray, as though you're a bit responsible for, uh, well, well, not having it stolen, but yeah. uh, looking after it and then uh, coming out and finding it gone. Or Ray had with the car keys. Uh, mm. Okay, Ray, thanks, uh, thanks for that. I'll do it for you. Now to Phillip Island, Russ, good evening. Good evening. Um, I've, got a, I've got a list of, which some people might like to get a pen right down for things that money can't buy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, money can't buy manners. Mm -hmm. Money can't buy morals. Money can't buy respect. Money can't buy character. Money can't buy common sense. Money can't buy trust. True. Mm -hmm. Money can't buy patience. Money can't buy class. And money can't buy integrity. Money can't buy love. And money can't buy time with your kids. So I'm not too sure. So I, I like all those items there. Well, I think they're beautiful. I think they're wonderful. And yeah. That's, and that's so true. You put money on the counter and say, I'd like to buy intelligence. I'd like to buy uh, how to, uh, Wisdom, how, how to, how to uh, bring my children up. Mm. That's not going to buy it for you. Mm. That's no, right. You've got uh, good principles there, Russ. High standards. That's, that's a bit of fun anyway. And I've got no money myself, but Bruce has got piles. Oh, I've got piles, but not, not plenty of money. I guess. <laughs> Righto, boys. Have a good night. All right, Russ, it's so true what you say. You're being very flippant about it, but it's absolutely yeah. the gospel. It's yes. so true. I made a note. Yeah, good points you raised. Well, you made a note, did you? Of, of the points he raised. Good. Man, good. I'll tell you again. Manners, oh. let me. Manners, morals, respect, mm. character, common sense, yeah. trust. Patience, class, integrity, love, and time no. with your kids. Satu at St Albans. Yes. Hello, boys. Hello, yes. Satu. This is a bit embarrassment because um, I'm just the uh, opposite to the gentleman. About the million. Yeah. Uh, ten million. Um, 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 I fully respect his um, attitude and everything else. I fully, fully agree. But uh, if I had ten million, uh, somebody gave it to the door. Uh, obviously, half of it, bigger chunk, went to uh, um, charities, and my favourites are obviously disability and aged care, mm. and not the government, not the government, but uh, certain services that uh, 
can support this. But after this, oh, it is so embarrassing, after this gentleman's uh, speech, uh, that I would uh, buy a two-bedroom unit in Williamstown, or Altona, really perhaps, and have somebody stay there and look after my kitten, and I would uh, jump into the uh, plane and take a cruise to um, Anchorage, Alaska. Oh, right. Okay. Yes. And then after five days there or so, because everybody, all my friends from Hawaii, they always go for a summer holiday to Alaska, which I found it very awkward. But, uh, um, well, that's it. Way. And then I would take the uh, train trip to Rocky Mountains, and then by the time you get the end of the train trip, you are sick of uh, cooked food, mm. so you want to fly back to Finland again, and, and in your own holiday house yeah. there, and do your own barbecues mm-hmm. and everything else, and come back to uh, Williamstown, perhaps, if I own the unit in Williamstown, and uh, my kitten is already tomcat yeah. and everything else so well. Oh. Mm. You sound as though you've got everything right there, uh, Satu, and all your plans for uh, Anchorage and Alaska and all those wonderful trips. Yes, she's really got the travel bug. Yeah, certainly has. Soapy, hello, Soapy. G'day, gents. How are you? Hello. Good. Hello. Good hello again, Soapy. Yeah, g'day. Uh, I was going to talk to you about... Uh, I've been... Uh, the end of this week, we've been married for 41 years, and uh, in all of that 41 years, I would say we've only been to the pictures together. Well, we've been to get pictures together a lot, but only once have we both enjoyed the same movie so much. Oh, really? Yes. Which movie? It was called Kingsman. Yeah. With uh, Colin Firth in it mm. and Michael Caine. Yeah. And it's a, it was a fantastic movie. What was that about? It was about. Uh, it was a spy spoof, I suppose, mm. um, and they had to be gentlemen when they were in it. But uh, you know, it's taken a long time to come around to mm. liking a movie. I, I think that what put her off at the start that when we got ma- when we did get married forty one years ago this week, um, we had a morning wedding, and we were in the city at the hotel at the start of the honeymoon off at about quarter to seven at night, and at about quarter past seven, I think it was at the Metro Burke Street, Ben-Hur was on for the first time since uh, it was ever released in 58 or whatever it was. It, yes. It, it, it was its first comeback. And I really wanted to uh, do that. I wanted to go and see Ben-Hur rather than commence a honeymoon, but she had different ideas. So that might have put her off going to pictures with me, I think. Yeah, I wonder if it'll ever happen again. What, uh, a honeymoon? No, 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 no. Will you ever go to a movie together again? Oh, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. We, we go a lot, but... She, you know, I've always got to go to her stuff, like, you know. Yeah. Like, I, I, like when that new Star Wars movie comes out, I'm dying to see that. Yeah, yeah but is she, though? She, she, she'll go because I want to go, but she won't enjoy it. Yeah, that's selfish. And then, I, you know, I went, we went to see shows like Notting Hill and some of these other girly shows, and I, I, don't, I can't stand those. But, uh, why, why don't you go and see your movies with a mate and she could go and see hers with a girlfriend? Oh. Well, <laughs> actually, it's not, it's not bad going on your own sometimes. Like, I yeah. actually went up to see a movie at uh, Victoria Gardens mm. on a Sunday morning uh, after Mass. And uh, I was the only one in the whole theatre. Oh, yes. I had a ball. <laughs> what was it? Yeah. It was National Treasure 2, Book of Secrets, oh. yeah. with Nicolas Cage. And uh, it was an American history show, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was standing up. At the, you know, I looked around, there was no one in there. I stood up and started clapping and moved seats every, every time I felt like it. I was, oh, it was really yeah. good. That made a good laugh of yourself. <laughs> I might do it again. Yeah, why not? All right, well, if you're yeah. on your own, you can. Mm-hmm. You can, of course you can do it. And I, I rang the sun up while the show was on and I was telling him how good it was and he said, oh, yeah, you better shut up, Dad, you're in the picture. I said, yeah, there's no one else here. <laughs> All right, Sophie. Okay, see you, Thanks guys. for sharing. Bye. All right, Sophie, thank you for calling. Ever uh, been to a movie at the Victoria Gardens? No. Yeah. Um, that would be a good topic with uh, Paul Harris one Sunday night. The, the, the movie that you went along and you both shared... Mm. Uh, the enjoyment of the film. Yes. Uh, you, your partner and yourself. Yeah, all right. Do you and Jill enjoy the same sort of movies? Oh, uh, yeah, I suppose. Uh, I think you're right. Um, yes. Oh, going right back when... Uh, what was that uh, Tony Curtis thing, The Great Race?
Oh, yeah, that was wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we had personal to enjoy that. That's the first one we ever saw together. Oh, OK. All right. uh, David, good evening. Thank you for calling. Good evening, boys. How are you? Yeah, David, welcome to Nightline. Thank you very much. I, uh, I just thought I'd call up and let you know that I've just uh, just been at the Rod Laver Arena and we were treated to seeing um, the dress rehearsal of Hugh Jackman's Broadway to Oz show. Oh, how wonderful. It was absolutely fabulous. Now, tell, us we how, were, tell us how you get an invitation for that. Well, the, you know, the nice thing about Hugh Jackman, he, he's a very, seems to be a very genuine and, and, and great guy, and there were a lot of charity groups that were there tonight. They were all complimentary tickets, as I understand. Yes. And, and uh, St Vincent's was there, and Will Vision was there, and um, there was uh, you know, a lot of groups that were there that he was basically... He was obviously needed an audience, um, but he also was able to give a lot back to those groups that helped so many people. So, well, yes, well, we had a call earlier on in the program tonight, uh, giving this the fact that uh, he was giving out tickets to, uh, to uh, you know, worthwhile people to come along and see the show for nothing. Yeah, absolutely fabulous. He's he's a fantastic entertainer and um, great stage, um, great effects, great lights. Um, I won't give too much away, but he's, uh, he, he's he's literally well off his feet at one point during the show, um, and uh, lots of Peter Allen material, oh, and uh, yes, yes. Uh, you know, very uh, really really great show, and talks a lot about his history, and, and uh, Deborah Lee's his wife was there as well, and talks a lot about his family. So, yeah, that's great. Um, if if there's any tickets going still for people, I can I can highly recommend it. Now, David, fun. David, what was the highlight? Was there a song? Was there a group of songs? A medley that he oh, did? I, I think it's very hard to go past. I still call Australia home. Oh yes. Um, and and the other one that's a favourite of mine is Peter Allen's Centerfield Saddler. A wonderful song. So um, yeah, they were probably the two highlights for me. And I had my daughters there as well. And my wife and uh, and we all we all had a great time. Right. Fabulous! Thank you for telling us about it. That was lovely, uh, right. David. Uh, did he show any clips from his movies? He did. He did. He he talked about um, he auditioning for uh, for Wolverine in, in X Men. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, told a few jokes. So yes, and in fact, he had uh, he had clips from all his movies and showed the history of of all the things he'd done. Um, over the years, so not not big clips, but enough to really make it a very interesting night. Oh, well, that's great! That's fabulous. You've had a terrific night, and thank you for uh, for telling us about it tonight. Um, Twenty-eight to uh, midnight. Malcolm Turnbull would be looking forward to getting into his double bed and, mm. and spending a bit of time in Sydney, wouldn't he? Yeah, wants to get home, I'm sure. Oh, gee, how much travel can you do? Be tired of Asia and wearing those fancy oh, that, shirts. Yes, that glistening white mm. uh, velour. Yes, they're all show ponies, aren't they? Oh well, I don't know what they are. They, well, they all get dressed in shirts, don't they? Yeah, they are cheating anything. That's what I want to know. I want to see results. Do you? Yeah, for my tax. Payers well, what are you funding. Doing? Well, uh, I just want to see Malcolm Turnbull make a few decisions, you know. Do you think so? Give him a chance to get back. Mm. He'll be jet lagged oh, for a couple of days. <laughs> now, listen, looking at uh, Tuesday's weather, a low of 12 degrees overnight, a high tomorrow of 25, a sunny morning, afternoon sea breezes forecast. Sounds good to me. Let's have a look at uh, who's there? Misha, is it Phil? Yes, or? in Mount Waverley. Hi, Misha. Yeah, hello. G'day. Um, yeah, just. Uh, before we we were talking about uh, cars that, that were stolen. Yes. Are you you're still on about that? If you like, why not? Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually, I, I've had uh, two uh, cars stolen. I, I'm a taxi driver, and, oh. and I've I've had two right. <coughs> uh, taxis stolen in the last ten years. You're unlucky. Gee, that's bad <laughs> luck, isn't it? One one was. Uh, 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 you know, quite a while ago was when the uh, we still had the Kingswood taxis. Yeah. And uh, I was driving um, all night. I parked the cab out the front of my house on the nature strip in Mount Waverley. Mm -hmm. Went to bed. Uh, woke up the next, you know, day. Went out. Nothing there. Oh. Right. Gee. And. Uh, uh, it was gone for two weeks. Sure. No one could find it. Mm. Eventually, you know where it was? No. Uh, one suburb away. Yes. So, obviously, um, it was some kids that probably mm. just 
took it for a joyride and more or less took it home. It was like one suburb away. Okay, was it damaged? No, it was just left and, uh, and, and obviously, you know, it sat there for two weeks and no one said nothing. Mm, no. <laughs> and what about the second time? The second one, uh, that was more recent. That was uh, about a uh, couple of years ago. And uh, oh, you wouldn't believe this one. <laughs> that was a classic. You know, uh, on um, Turak Road, uh, just at the mouth of the freeway, there's that service station. Um, yes, yes. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I went in there to gas up. It was probably, uh, you know, 11, 12, 11 o'clock at night. I gassed up. I went in to pay. And in, in, in those couple of minutes that I was in the... Uh, in the um, petrol station there, paying for the gas, they must have been hiding in the bushes or something. Because yeah. it was in those couple of minutes, you know, that I, I walked and paid. I come back out to the uh, uh, the uh, gas pumps, mm. and the cab's gone. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd, uh, I'd make it uh, a rule of taking your keys out every time you go to the service station. Oh, yes, you must lock the every car. Every time. Take oh. that out. Well, then, well, maybe not lock it, but take the keys out. Yes, exactly. All right, Mr. you learn by your mistakes. I realise that. Yes. And, uh, you've uh, learned the hard way. Been unlucky twice. Uh, thanks for your call. George at Seaford. Hello, uh, Bruce and Philip. Hey, what's news, George? Uh, um... About money, they say um, money's not everything, mm. but uh, if you've got enough, you can go around the world. Yeah, that's mm, true. true. But, uh, if you've got a, enough again, you can go around the world twice. Twice, that's yeah. right. Mm. And if you've got enough, you can go around the world as ma many times as you like. Oh, you've got enough, right. you never come home. Mm. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, last night you had uh, someone bring up about Zeekville line. Yeah. Last night. Oh, yes, that's right. And uh, he mentioned no one had hanged their washing on the Zeekfield line. Yeah, there. yes. And if you look deeply into it, uh, the soldiers had to wash their clothes and hang them on the Zeekfield line. Yeah, that's right. That is a, a fact, uh, yes. a true story. Would you like a little poem uh, about no, the sure. war? Just a couple of verses, yeah. Just about the war. And not a poem, it's a little song. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's uh, kiss me good night, Sergeant Major. Tuck me in my little wooden bed. Oh, we all love you, Sergeant Major. When we hear you call and show a leg, don't forget to wake me in the morning and bring me round a nice hot cup of tea. Go blind me. Kiss me good night, such a major, such a major be a mother to me. There's yeah, an old wartime song, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Good, Good to hear it, George. Thank you, George. Okay, what's on tomorrow, big boy? Sounds all right, doesn't it? What have you got planned? Surfing down at uh, Malakuta Inlet. Oh, okay. Be safe. And gold prospecting up at Bandura. Oh, take your Geiger count. What are you doing? Oh, I thought I'd go Christmas shopping for loved ones. Really? Where? Oh, I haven't decided yet. Maybe... The reject shop, oh, yeah. maybe Sam's Warehouse. That'll be right. Maybe a two-dollar shop, even. What are you getting all of us here? Oh, that'll be a surprise. Oh yes. It 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 will be a pleasant surprise. Okay, Jeff. Good evening. Thank you for calling, Jeff. Oh, good day, Bruce and Phil. Look, I've got a couple of things, so I'll be quick. But um, if you won ten million, if I won ten million, I think I'd want to give a lot of people a little bit. If you know what I mean, because. Oh. I wouldn't want my lifestyle to change so much that I don't take my friends along with me. Yeah, and I just, true. I think so it would be important to sort of raise everyone's standards a little bit, make everything a bit better for everyone without um, sort of putting you apart from all your friends and loved ones. Good but, point, good point. And, but the other thing, Bruce, you asked, you were talking about um, films earlier. On Friday night, my wife and I went to see The Dressmaker. Have either of you guys seen that yet? No, I, I haven't. Oh, look, you've got to see it. It's just a, a, it's a nice, light-hearted, and I just loved it. And you know what made it really good was that we had these couple of ladies sitting behind us, and they were those sort of people who had that raucous sort of laugh. Yeah. So something funny would happen, I know. and you would, you'd laugh at what was on screen, and then you'd continue laughing at the lady behind you who was mm. laughing. Yes. And I, you know, I would strongly recommend you have a look at it, Bruce, as well, if you can. And um, there's some such good characters in there, and, you know, 
It's set in um, country Australia in the um, oh, probably the early 50s, oh. and it's um, you can sort of see different characters within the movie who you can relate to in your own life, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah, yeah. So, and anyone who is going to look at it, I've got to say that I just love the um, the part of the mother that was brilliant, and the part of the police sergeant. He was such a character. So, yeah, I just strongly recommend that anyway, guys. So well, that's all I've got it's, to do it tonight. sounds good recommendation, Jeffrey. And and what I would love about it is the way that they've reconstructed that country town because yeah. nothing I loved more as a little boy going into state than stopping off at these country towns and the general stores and all the absolute wonderful makeup of uh, of country Victoria in those towns. I agree. Where in Victoria did they shoot it? Do you know? No, I've got no idea. It, it was a reconstructed city, a re reconstructed yes. town. Yes. Uh, but I'd love to just see that dusty old mm. uh, main road going through the town. Which still exists, as you know, in places like Clunes yeah. and Malden. Gina and Templestow, good day, Gina. Hello, Bruce and Philip. How are you? Yeah. Hi, Gina. Hi. Um, you're talking about cars being stolen. My car, my husband and myself, our car was stolen from our driveway uh, several years ago, and it was a tribute, the Mazda. Oh, right, yes, yes. Uh, um, that was one thing, but and they were looking for it. It took about a week, and then they said they found it. But um, when they found it, it, it was in a, a um, oh, what is it, a, 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 an accident. Oh. Someone... Uh, the people who had stolen it, the men, the men who had stolen it, had driven into a woman who was putting her baby into her car. Oh, dear me. And I was devastated. Oh. I was absolutely devastated. And the baby was all right, but the woman ended up in hospital. And oh. I, I said to the police, I said, can I visit? And they said, no, it's best not to get um, yes. involved. Yes. I, I was devastated. Oh, you would be. It was the worst thing could ever happen. You, you, you think, and, and, and when they found the car, there was um, a whole lot of credit cards in the back. Yeah. Keys and jewellery. Gee. So, and the car was written off. It was just completely gone. But you would immediately think of the woman and the, ba oh, was, the baby. Yeah, the, the car is nothing. But nothing, I mean, the no. ba when they had hit the baby, oh. uh, well, hit the woman who was putting the the baby in the car, and she was actually at the um, the doctor's with the baby coming out. Yeah. And she's standing outside with the door open, and it just gone slammed right into her, oh. and it was the most devastating news I'd ever heard. Oh yes. I was just so bad. Oh. Awful. That's it was terrible. Uh, I bet you got rid of the car soon after, Jim. Oh, I've never, never, no, I didn't want to see it. Mm. No, it was at the wreckers. We, we just left it and that was it. Never wanted to see it again. Well, when you say there were credit cards and so on in the back, were they your own, were they? Oh, they had ours, but they had um, a lot of other people's as well. Oh. They, they were stolen. Oh. Everything was stolen. There were really? Wallets. Yes. There was wallets, there was credit cards, there were keys, there was jewellery. They just found, and they oh. actually, when they asked my husband to go into the interview, mm. they said they knew, knew who they were. And, um, oh, well, that was good. And it was, uh, but uh, um, just on a little lighter note, I went to see, um, I don't, you, maybe you went, uh, Hugh Jackman in Beauty and the Beast with, um, I think it's Rachel Beck. Yeah, oh. a wonderful show years ago. Yeah, Marvellous. Beautiful. Are they ever going to do that one again? Or... Well, I don't know, they should. That was the one that uh, spearheaded him as a star. He was wonderful in that. All right, Gina, sounds like we've lost you, but thank you. You there, Gina? Yeah, I'm here. We're going to give you a Hamper World Christmas Hamper. Oh, Merry Christmas. This is valued at $100, audio Christmas gift hamper from hamperworld.com.au, and we'll ask you to hold the line. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't hang up now. No, Hamper, no. Uh, the Hamper World Christmas Hamper, wonderful uh, gift. Yeah, delivered in time for Christmas. Check it out at hamperworld.com.au. Thank you, Gina, for calling us. Uh, very quickly, Eric, good evening. Oh, good evening, Bruce. Yeah, talk to us, Eric. We're running out of time. Oh, hi, guys. How are you going? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. What, what can we do for you? You've rung us. Oh, no. I <laughs> couldn't say you got a great show there. Thank you. Thank you. Is that all you want to say? Oh, no. I was just checking um, what was the, the topic of uh, speaking to Bianca there. Oh, we're running out of time for topics now. Ring, yeah, earlier, no. ring earlier tomorrow night, Eric. Yeah, no, no worries, sure. All right, Eric, thank you. Lynn, are you, are you there, Lynn? Yes, I am, Bruce. I'm You've got a happy birthday greeting. Oh, just to my mother, who is an avid listener of yours, Audrey mm. of Ben Roy. Yes. She is 89 years old today. Oh, how lovely. And I know she'll be home and listening because she never turns her radio off until you guys mm. are finished.
question. Oh, the darling, she might be listening now, and I hope she is. <laughs> she would be, yes, and I really appreciate it. Just for, you know, it would be a real thrill for you to say happy birthday to Mum. <laughs> well, we will, both well, of us. Audrey, Audrey, that's a real milestone in your life, and Lynn sends all her love and all your family and grandchildren. I think that's gorgeous. Oh, thank you very much for that, guy. Uh, and our closing songs for you, Audrey, Midnight, The Stars, and you on your birthday. Mm. Beautiful, thank you. Okay. Thank you for calling us, Lynn. Happy thank birthday, you. Audrey. May A jar of pebbles. When things in your life seem almost too much to handle, when 24 hours in a day are not enough, remember the jar of pebbles. A professor stood before his philosophy class and had some items in front of him. When the class began, wordlessly, he picked up a very large and empty mayonnaise jar and proceeded to fill it with golf balls. He then asked the students if the jar was full. They agreed that it was. The professor then picked up a box of pebbles and poured them into the jar. He shook the jar lightly and the pebbles rolled into the open areas between the golf balls. He then asked the students if the jar was full and they agreed it was. The professor picked up a next a box of sand and poured that into the jar and of course the sand filled up everything else. He asked again if the jar was full. The students responded with a unanimous yes. The professor then produced two cups of coffee from under the table and poured the entire contents into the jar, effectively filling the empty space between the sand. The students laughed. Now, said the professor, as the laughter subsided, I want you to recognize that this jar represents your life. The golf balls are the important things. God, your family, your children, your health, your friends, your favorite passions, things that if everything else was lost and the only thing that remained was them, your life would still be full. The pebbles are the other things that matter, like your job, your house and your car. The sand is everything else, the small stuff. If you put the sand into the jar first, there'd be no room for the pebbles or the golf balls. The same goes for life. If you spend all your time and energy on the small stuff, and you never have room for the things that are important to you, pay attention to the things that are critical to your happiness. Play with your children. Take time to get medical checkups. Take your partner out to dinner. Play another 18 holes of golf. There'll always be time to clean the house. Take care of the golf balls first, and the things that really matter will play their part properly. Set your priorities. The rest is just sand. One of the students raised her hand and inquired what the coffee represented. The professor smiled. I'm glad you asked. It just goes to show that no matter how full your life may seem, there's always room for a couple of cups of coffee with a friend. Copyright restricts distribution of this piece by any means of duplication. Well, time goes so quickly, and it's just, uh, just sped away from us tonight. Thank you for your company in the abridged two-hour version of Nightline. Yeah, we've had the best time. Oh, yes, we have. But it'll be repeated tomorrow night at, uh, at 10 o'clock. Yes. Yeah, twice the fun in half the time. Well, that's right. If you can just imagine what that means to your uh, cycle, mm -hmm. you'll enjoy it. I mean, everything I used to spread over four hours, have you noticed I cram it into two now? No. Nah, I mm. don't hear any of that. Mm. I'm, I'm dying to. I well, come in here every night to hear that cram. Maybe tomorrow night. Uh, the sun will come up tomorrow, Bertram Bottom Dollar. We're all smiling, and thank you for your company tonight. Thank you, Adele, in the control room. Yes, and thank you, Jane Pauley. You were wonderful. Uh, uh, two, uh, two of the girls working tonight. Yes. Uh, this song, uh, Midnight, the Stars are New, this is for you, Audrey, on your birthday. Uh, to Samuel. Good night, Samuel. Carter and Amelia. Emily. Charlotte. Sweet Ella Grace Little. William Oliver. And Sophia Grace. I'm Bruce Mansfield. Good night, Bruce Mansfield. I'm Phil. And we're back tomorrow, as I say, but uh, coming up after midnight... Luke Boner. And it's Australia overnight. Yeah. You'll see the brand new day dawn over Melbourne, and over Australia. Offside mm. at Jamie. Mm. Yeah. And that's the way she went today.